Um, I, I think it meshes really well. Um, I feel like me, like I said, um, I know we have a, a lot of guards, a lot of ball handlers, but I feel like me personally, I can kind of uh, fill that void defensively, um, being able to guard um, some of the guards on on um, other teams, the better guards, um, kind of take that load off for um, Corey, Killian, Cade, and just being able to um, take those guards head on defensively. Um, and then offensively, uh, being able to play off the ball, I feel like I can do that. Um, that's kind of also why I wanted to continue to improve my shooting, uh, just being able to space the floor for them. Um, so that's kind of how I felt like I uh, can fit in with um, the fellow guards here. You know, you got a great group of young guys. You know, we love the way to play, play hard, play together. Um, you know, it's no egos. So you're just going out and you know, having fun playing basketball. And uh, for me, it was just about, you know, I'm at a point in my career where I think I could really help a team like this. You know, young teams with leadership, you know, on and off the court. You know, just, you know, teaching guys because, you know, nine years in now, uh, you kind of have those tricks of the trade. Um, you know, it's time to pass them on. So um, I thought it was a great opportunity in that standpoint. And also a great opportunity to go up there and play. All right, Pistons fans, so in today's video, we are going to be talking about the Kelly Olenek, Saban Lee, and Boyong Bogdanovich trade. Make sure that you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel, and I will also be doing another live stream later today around 5.30 talking about this trade. So if you have a little bit of time to come through and say what's up, come in and we'll talk more about this trade the things that i can't discuss in this video because there's so much you know that comes from a trade like this so at 10 a.m september 22nd of 2022 this trade was official the trade reads the pistons give up kelly olenic and Saban lee and the utah jazz give up bogdanovich so i will say that off tops i like this trade but i do have a few small issues here and there for the Pistons side of things. So let's start off with Kelly Olenek. So the Pistons signed Kelly Olenek to a three-year contract and towards the middle of last season, I began to see the warning signs for something like this happening with Kelly Olenek. So before Kelly came to Detroit, he was in Houston. He averaged 20 points per game. He looked quick for a big man. He had a good handle for a big man. And overall, he was solid in Houston, but what people forget to remember is that he only played in 27 games that season. He got injured for most of it. Then he came to Detroit. To start off the season, he was pretty decent. But what happened again? Kelly Olynyk got injured. Then he came back towards the end of this most previous season. And, you know, he was a good passer. He rebounded the ball effectively. But overall, Kelly Olynyk struggled when it came to consistent shooting and consistent scoring this most previous season. And with Kelly Olenek being 31 years old, he's 6'11", he's 240 pounds, and with these injuries becoming more frequent as he ages, the signs for something like this is clear as day. You could definitely see why Troy Weaver would make a move like this. And Kelly Olenek, he's meant to be a backup. He's not meant to be a starting big man in the NBA. But even with that, having these health problems is gonna hold him back a lot more as his career progresses. And then if you look at the Utah Jazz side of things, um, they need a big man. You know, obviously they're trying to move off of the Donovan Mitchell and Gobert era. So adding someone like Kelly Olenek, he'll help them out. So I can see why they would want to make a move like this. And then lastly, um, how this affects the Pistons is, you know, Jalen Duran. With the Pistons making a move like this, they must truly believe that he is ready to go day one. So we know that Stewart's gonna be the main guy, and then it's gonna be between Duran and Noel, and most likely Duran will end up winning that battle out because um, Noel, as good as he is on defense, he flat out can't score at all. He has a very limited offensive game. So I'm definitely gonna be keen in to see what Duran could do next season. But let's move on to Saban Lee, and this one I can keep short and quick. Saban Lee was not going to play for the Pistons this next season, and for multiple years to come, he probably wasn't going to play. Saban Lee is a fine player. Saban is an explosive scorer. He's been slowly but surely, you know, trying to improve his three-point shot. He's been looking more confident out there, but he just wasn't going to have any impact here in Detroit 
he was never going to play. So hopefully, you know, being in a place like Utah with them moving into a new era, maybe he'll get a shot down there. It kind of sucks to see him go, but there's just not any space for him right now. Now let's talk about the addition that the Pistons made, Bogdanovich. He's 33 years old right now. He's 6'7", and he's a small forward and a power forward combination. This most previous season, he averaged 19 points per game, shooting 38% from the three-point line. He is a veteran with a lot of playoff experience. And the biggest thing when it comes to, you know, Bogdanovich is that he only has one year left on his deal, which means that he will likely be a rental player. The Pistons can either decide to re-sign him in free agency or we can let him walk. We can try to trade him at the deadline. There is a multitude of options that you can have with a player who is this good on a one-year deal. So that contract is definitely something that I like. He's going to definitely help this team, you know, get more wins in the column. And that's something that we want to see from these young Pistons. You know, we want to see them grow and improve. We don't want to see them being around, you know, the 20 win mark every season. We want to see them get better. So adding a player like Bogdanovich will definitely help the Pistons get more wins. He's going to be a mentor for Sadiq Bey. You know, I believe that Bey can be much better than Bogdanovich, but Bey should definitely, you know, try to emulate some of the things that Bogdanovich could do. And then the last thing that I will say before I wrap this video up is that this is kind of bad for um, Isaiah Livers. He'll probably get way less playing time now. We might not see him as much as we thought we would see him because Bogdanovich is going to take up a lot of minutes. So it kind of does suck for Isaiah Livers. But for the most part, to wrap this video up, um, I'm happy with the trade. This definitely works out for the Utah Jazz and for the Detroit Pistons. This changes things for Duren. This changes things for Livers. And then it asks us, you know, a player that's going to help the Pistons get more wins. Now, I know some people want the Pistons to continue to tank and try to get, you know, another key piece to help out Cade and Ivy. But for me, I want to see the Pistons improve. I don't want to have to have another season where we're tanking. So overall with this trade, I am more positive than negative. But that's all that I have to say. Pistons fans, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Thank you all for 7K, and I'm out.